This is the solutions to my MA145 test 3. This is the Steve Sullen version. And I'm going to try and do it writing over the solutions and hope that that works. We'll see how this goes. So here's what we know. We know that f of x is a function which is continuous everywhere except it has a vertical asymptote at x equals 0. So we know that it's going to have a vertical asymptote there at x equals 0. Then we know that its large x behavior is the same as e to the x. So we know it's going to increase without bound when x is large, and it's going to approach a vertical, uh, sorry, a horizontal asymptote of y equals 0 as x goes to minus infinity. It's going to approach it, in fact, from above. Then we know that there are three critical points. One is at minus 3, 4. So that's going to be one critical point. The next is at 2, 0 and the third is at 5, negative 4. So those three points are critical points. Um, so right away we know that we can connect the dots from 2, 0 to 5, negative 4, and from 5, 5, negative 4 to infinity. We can also connect the dots from the horizontal asymptote up to negative 3, comma, uh, 4. Finally, we know that the second derivative at 2 is negative 1. By the second derivative test, that makes 2 a relative max, which means that it must be going down as it travels to the left, so it must go to minus infinity. We also know that f of negative 1 is 1, so we know that the function must travel down there, and since there's no other critical points, it must also travel down to negative infinity. So it's increasing from minus infinity to minus 3, it's increasing from 0 to 2, and it's increasing from 5 to infinity. For question 2, we're looking at this function, um, and we wanted to sketch the graph, including asymptotes, intervals in which it's increasing, decreasing, local maxes and mins, and the large x behavior. So for the domain, that is, to find vertical asymptotes, we ask where is the denominator equal to 0, and that happens at x equals negative 1. So we've got a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 1. Um, so one way that I taught in previous semesters and left in the solutions here for some reason um, to find what happens at the um, vertical asymptote is to compute these limits from the left and right um, and see that they're both positive and infinity, but we can do that better by, there we go, um, by taking the, fi finding the critical points, um, we take the derivative. So remember, you take the bottom times the derivative of the top minus the top times the derivative of the bottom over the bottom squared. We already know that the bottom is x plus 1 squared. So well, if we leave it like that, we get x plus 1 to the fourth. On the top, we have x plus 1 squared times the derivative of minus x, which is minus 1, minus, this should be an x squared. Um, I'm sorry, this is minus x, the top, times the derivative of the bottom, which is 2 times x plus 1 times the derivative of x plus 1, which is 1. When you multiply, uh, oh, when you notice each factor on the top has an x plus 1, and the denominator has multiple factors of x plus 1, we cancel that out, and we're left with 1x plus 1 times negative 1, plus the 2x, that's minus minus 2x, becomes this plus. And on the bottom, we've lost one factor of x plus 1, so it's x plus 1 cubed, and then when all the dust settles, we get x minus 1 over x plus 1 cubed. That's the derivative, undefined, of course, at x equals minus 1, but it's 0 when x equals 1. Um, so x equals 1 is going to be a critical point. Its value is minus a quarter. So x equals 1 minus a quarter is the sole critical point. Um, we know that uh, um, 
the horizontal asymptote happens um, is zero because as x goes to infinity, this behaves like minus x over x squared, which behaves like minus one over x, which goes to zero at plus and minus infinity. So then we connect the dots here. And um, if we plug in a few points into the derivative, negative two, for example, the derivative is positive, so it's increasing. Um, zero, the derivative is negative, so it's decreasing. And one ninth to the derivative, and at two, the derivative is one ninth, so it's increasing. That makes the one critical point a local minimum. Okay, for Newton's method, um, we're going to approximate ln of 5, starting with x1 equals 1. If we want to um, approximate x equals ln of 5, we need that to be a solution of f of x equals 0. And we have always done that by inverting the function. So inverting ln is e to the. So e to the x is equal to 5 when x is ln of 5, so e to the x minus 5 equals 0. So that's the key observation. We always follow that same pattern. You invert the function, and then you subtract off the value that you plugged into it. The square root of 60 is x squared minus 60. The cube root of 10 is x cubed minus 10. The log of 5 is e to the x minus 5. Its derivative is e to the x, so we plug into the Newton's formula x1, which is 1, minus f of x1 divided by f prime of x1. And that works out to 1.839397. We plug that into the exact same formula. Everything stays the same except the ones are replaced by 1.8 somethings. And that gives us 1.633, the first um. The first decimal place changed, but if we plug that in again, the first decimal place does not change. We go from 1.63 to 1.61. So that means 1.6 is the natural log of 5 to one decimal place. Uh, for the next section, next question, we want two numbers that add up to 12. We want to find the smallest the sum of their squares can be. So we know... The variables are the two numbers. We are asking that they add up to 12. The thing we want to minimize is the sum of their squares. So what are two numbers that add up to 12? Well, 0 and 12. What would be the sum of their squares? You would square each one, 0 and 144, and add them to get 144. 3 and 9 add up to 12. The sum of their squares would be 3 squared plus 9 squared, which is 81 plus 9, which is 90, and so on. The smallest of the ones I tried was 6 and 6, which gives you 36 plus 36 is 72. So if I call the variables x and y, saying that x plus y, that they have to add up to 12, is saying that x plus y equals 12, which we can say as y is equal to 12 minus x. The quantity that we want to minimize is the sum of the squares. That is x squared plus y squared, and you can check that's what we were doing here. If x is 0 and y is 12, x plus y equals 12, and x squared plus y squared is equal to 144. So our formulas match what we were doing intuitively. In this formula, you use the constraint y equals 12 minus x to eliminate a variable. Um, if you expand that, you get x squared plus 144 minus 2 times 24 times x plus another x squared. So 2x squared minus 24x plus 144. And finally, to minimize that, you take the derivative and set it equal to 0. The derivative is 4x minus 24. When you set it equal to 0, you get 4x equals 24. You get x equals 6. y is 12 minus 6, which is 6. And that tells you that the minimum, in fact, is 72. As we guessed, the second derivative test tells you what kind of critical point 6, 72 is. We take the derivative of the derivative. 4x minus 24 prime 
is 4. At x equals 6, 4 is greater than 0. 4 is greater than 0 everywhere. So this is positive second derivative. By the second derivative test, this is a local minimum, and in fact, the absolute minimum. OK, question 5. We want to write a function whose derivative is f prime equals x cubed minus 5 and whose value at 2 is 0. So to find the antiderivative of x cubed minus 5, I anti-differentiate. x cubed becomes add 1 to the exponent, x to the fourth over 4, minus 5 becomes minus 5x, and then we add plus c because we do not know what the constant is. But then we plug in x equals 2, f of 2 equals 0, so that means that 0 is equal to 2 squared, I'm sorry, 2 to the fourth over 4, minus 5 times 2. 16 over 4 uh, is 4 minus 10 is negative 6, so c equals 6, so we get x to the fourth over 4 minus 5x plus 6. You can check that it satisfies both those conditions. Okay? Um, so here's a graph of f prime of x, and I ask questions about f. So I asked, where are the critical numbers of f? When f is a critical point, f prime is 0 or undefined. So I'm asking, where is f prime 0 or undefined? It's never undefined, but it is 0 at these three points, at x equals negative 3, 0, and 2. Um, so I need to determine whether each of these is smooth or non-differentiable, and whether they're min, max, or degenerate. Each of them is smooth because the derivative is continuous. Uh, here, the derivative goes from positive to negative, so the function goes from increasing to decreasing, so that makes uh, this a relative max. Over at 2, the derivative goes from negative to positive, so the function goes from decreasing to increasing. That makes this a relative min. But at 0, the derivative goes from negative to negative, which means the function goes from decreasing to decreasing, just leveling off in between. So the function looks like that, which makes it degenerate. Um, finally, I asked for all the inflection numbers of f. Inflection numbers of f are points where the function goes between concave up and concave down. That means the derivative is going between increasing and decreasing. So it happens when the derivative has a relative maximum or relative minimum. So negative 4, negative 1, 0, 1, and 3. It didn't look like 3 in the picture, but that's where it was. 0 is a degenerate critical point, which is always an inflection point. Finally, question 7. Here's a graph of the derivative of f. Um, I asked you to sketch a graph of f. Let's see if I can do it here. We know that f has a critical point right around um, 1, and another critical point at 6. I'm sorry, I totally said that wrong. We know that f prime is 0 at 0 and at 3, so f will have a critical point at 0 and at 3. Um, so if the critical point is here at 0, we know that uh, f prime is positive after that, which means that f is increasing. It gets steep and then shallower. So if you wanted to be really fancy, you could put a little curve, se curve like that in it. Between um, 0 and 3, f is decreasing, but at 0, it's a critical point. So it's horizontal, decreasing, horizontal with an inflection point in between. So this is what f of x looks like. 
and I did want you to see that there was a leveling off there because the derivative went to zero. That is the test. I hope that that was helpful and clarified things.